the principle that God loves us and that he wants us to love one another. And every every everything that we start to connect with God is, is this the essence of love. I, I can't I can't tell you if you don't know how 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 much space there is in between the world and the body of Christ, because the body of Christ has 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 tarnished the reputation of God by our our unwillingness to be obedient to God by not following God's structure and not doing the will of God. Remember, when we when we connect with God, it's no longer our will being done. Not your, not the now network is just not a, an acronym for for a, a, a nice quick phrase to say. No, it is an acronym of truth because it's not our will. It must be the will of God. And we we were we were we were moving into the place where when you now remember Wednesday, I'm, I'm a branch. I'm no longer a twig. I'm no longer a little piece of of of, of nothing anymore. I am a branch because I am connected to the vine. And the vine is connected to the vine dresser. And now the vine dresser is encouraging me to encourage you to get more connected to God. If the, if the, if the message that we're going to preach of one accord is that get closer to God, stay in his awe. Remember, staying in his awe is in staying in the, in the, in the, in the, in the atmosphere that God is so powerful that you know that it's being taken care of on your behalf. You're not wondering. You're not questioning. You're, you're not going through the, the mental phases of, of, of letting someone put you down or letting someone tell you you can't or letting someone discourage you from knowing you are the branch. Remember, he says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Verse one, chapter 15 of John. Remember, that's where we were at. Minister Terry just put that up there. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit. Now you got to look at that. He didn't say just anybody. He says any branch that's in me. If you're serving God and you're calling yourself in him, but you are not producing, there's something wrong with the system. There's something wrong if people aren't leaving your, 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 your atmosphere or your, your, your presence leaving there saying, you know what? I feel better than I did when I, when I, when I, when I got into this relationship with him. That when I moved into the place where God is dwelling, I knew that it was about love. I knew that it was about joy. I knew that it was about peace. So you got to know that you've been given the gift of peace. It's, it, it wasn't free. It was a freely given gift. See, John is so, 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 so good at his record taking because it comes out clearly in order. We're talking about the true vine, but go back up to 25 and verse 14 and understand this. It says, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. See, you have to know that as you're in God, you're not alone. Yes, I got your back. Yes, you got my back, but you are not alone. The things that you have learned from God now are, 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 are strengthened by the Holy Spirit because he now is feeding you because he's left, he's been left here to what? Help you. When do you need help in a time of trouble? When do you need help when things aren't going right? When do you need help when folks are talking about you? When do you need help when everything that's, that you know should be in order is out of order? I need help. And I need to know that I'm not helpless. <laughs> you need to know that you're not helpless. I, we get so caught up into the physical things and we get so caught up into what we hear and taste and smell and touch and see that we get discouraged from God and we don't want to be obedient. We can't say that I'm going to commit to a, 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 a principle. What's a principle? Something that God has given us saying that you must produce. It's time for us to, st to start producing. Uh, uh, and I know this is probably not going to be a very popular broadcast this morning. I can already tell numbers are dropping as, as we go and, and other things, you know, I'm telling you, you got to watch out. You got to watch out what God has called you to do, because before you know it, somebody else will be trying to do what God called you to do. And then you'll get distracted about that. Stay focused and know you are not helpless. 
It's going to get bad. It's going to get worse. It's going to come a point in time where you're going to have to rely on God and God alone. Because everything I try to do for you is not going to work. Everything that I try to do for you is not going to make sense. Everything that I try to do for you is going to benefit me in the end because why would I do it for you when I need to do it for myself? Oh yeah, we got to we have to become real about this thing that we're really saying, you know what? I need to work on me. And yes, I love you. Yes, I want to see better for you. And yes, I pray for you, but I must work on me. Because the only thing that can fix me is God. And the only reason God can fix me is when I'm really, really ready to fix myself. See, are you ready to step up today and say, I'm not a twig? No, 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 no. I'm not a twig no more. I am a branch. And I am a branch that is, watch this, been pruned. I am a branch that has been cleansed. Remember the word of God cleansed you. Remember that when you are now in him and you become productive, God is now strengthening you to become more productive. Watch here. We're going back to, to verse uh, 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 chapter, chapter 15. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it. See, believe me, he's, he's doing something for you today. Whether you're productive or whether you're not productive. I choose to be productive because I want you to go ahead and prune some stuff off of me. Thank you, Latasha Clayman. I'm not a twig. I am a whole branch, a full branch. A, watch, a producing branch. Yeah, see, see, you can't just be a branch. You remember the, the story of the fig tree? The fig tree, it looked, it looked pr productive from far off. You may look, you may look like a branch from far off, but when he gets up close to you and says, produce fruit, <laughs> are you a twig? Because if you're a twig, then he'll curse you and you wither away. Watch this. And every branch that bears fruit, he proves that it may bear what? More fruit. See, a whole branch is going to bear much fruit. Now I was sharing last night on the, on the Hub City Radio. Be Productive is nothing you see right here. This is hard work. This is how I like to dress. These are the things I like. Okay, this has nothing to do with God blessing me. This is all me, me, me. Keep it real. I put this Dodger shirt on to promote it. <laughs> I put this Dodger hat on to promote it. If you need your Dodger gear here in Los Angeles, come to East Tees. That's why I wore this. But guess what? There's other stuff. This is stuff I like. This is not proving that God is real. This cross is not either. This just because the cross is around somebody's neck does not believe that does not mean that they are following God completely. It does not mean that. So I have to know that it's up to me to work on me to get me right to become what productive because it's time for pruning. See, when it's time for pruning, it's time to let some stuff go. When it's time for pruning, you don't have to listen. You don't have to have your brother come tell you to get the the uh, the, the, the 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 plank out your eye. You see the plank yourself. You don't need me to tell you to do this and stop that. You knew when you was typing it. You knew when you was putting it out there. You knew when you was about to say it that it was already wrong. But we go ahead because now we want to act out what's inside. My God. See, we got to get so real about this thing that we need to learn to shut this down. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, we were talking about some, some actions last night. And I said, well, before you ever do an action, you've already done it in your mind. So uh, it doesn't mean you could go, then, oh, then I might as well go do it. No, you need to learn to stop thinking it. Someone said, well, we're going to have thoughts. Well, you better have the kind of thoughts you want to have. I want to have thoughts that I am productive for God and that no matter what other people say, I am going to stay productive for God. I'm not going to get turned away because of the, 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 the namesayers. I'm not going to get turned away because of other religions and other people. I'm going to stay consistent to become productive. I will not, I will not serve him anymore without productivity. Watch this. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean, what? Because of the word of God. So stop trying to get you already cleansed if you're in him and you have taken up to be productive. You have taken up, good morning, my sister, Josette, how are you? You have taken up the position to be productive. What is productive? That you see more fruit because now God lives in you. Yes. And now you have the peace of God. 
Don't get it wrong. You're not left alone. You've still been left to help her. Remember, you've been given a gift of grace. That is it, that the Holy Spirit is here to help you. And not only help you, it's here to help me too. Exactly. See, what God has done for me, he wants to do for you. Just like he wants you me to serve him, he wants you to serve him. Watch this. I am the vine, verse 5. Well, no, no, no. Let, I'm not going to skip over this part again. It's, we already read this uh, 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 on Wednesday, but you know what? Let's bounce back up into verse 4. It says, abide in me. You have to learn to spend some time in God. People say, well, I can't see him. No, you have to spend time in him because you meditate with him and you now let his word become true to you. Last night, I'm I'll be honest with you. Last night, I was around other people that just, it wasn't all a bunch of room of Christians. It was a, a, a this opinion, that opinion, this opinion, that opinion. And guess what? At the end of the night, when we start to let the, the dust settle, we were all saying the same thing. That it's not right to treat people wrong. We were all saying the same thing. That women shouldn't be disgraded. We were all saying the same thing. That, that, that rape is a crime. We were all saying the same thing. That, 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 that racism is, is not, it shouldn't be accepted. We were all saying the same thing. But because we got a different language, it sounded different. And you say, you all talk English. Yes, we did. But don't you know, language ain't just the, 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 uh, the grammar you speak. It's, the how, it's how you say it. It's, it's, it's the words you use. And it's the power of your words. I'm telling you. And, but when we all thought about it, we were all saying the same thing. Even though one, one man used one word of profanity. So what? Was I supposed to uh, uh, curse him and run him down and say, I'm the pastor. Don't speak like me. You do what you do. Because guess what? I'm going to stay productive. And I have a force field, a productivity around me that says no weapon formed against me will prosper. Because I won't let it in. I'm not going to pay, pay attention to it. No, no, no. I am not going to allow it to direct me anymore because then I become a twig. I promise I will not be a twig again. I am a whole branch full of productivity, full of fruit, full of grace, full of love because he is in me and he is nothing but love. Watch this. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. See, you need God. You need God in your life today, just like I do. There's no question about it. We need God in our lives. You need that relationship to confirm. You need that relationship to affirm. You need that relationship to now set aside apart from everything else. God must become the number one, the number one in your life. He must, it can't be number two. Remember, we were talking last week. He, he's a jealous God. Exodus chapter 34, 15. He's a jealous God. He said, you'll serve no other God before me. You can read Exodus 20. Read that chapter. He says, I'm a jealous God. I'm not going for it. And you're not going to play me because I am God and you serve me. But don't you know there's many other gods out there that we serve that have a lot of other names. Vehicles, houses, money, car, you name it. We will serve another God before we'll serve the God. We'll go out, oh my, my God, I owe my, we'll go borrow money for our God instead of sowing into the God. Yes, my, see, see, that's the thing of it is, is that we look that we need to be so together on the outside instead of being together on the inside. Don't you know we need to be invested in on the inside more by abiding in him and, and he abides in us? He says, he says, a, and a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Who He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. That's why I'm saying you got to look at your little fruit basket. This is your own. You, you look, 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 look. I have a basket that I'm dealing with right here. And so do you. So your basket is your basket and you have to you have to manage your basket. My basket is my basket. I have to manage my basket. And when it, this is when it gets mixed up. When we trying to start. Well, here, here's some of my basket for your basket. My fruit don't work in your fruit basket. Your fruit don't work in my fruit basket because what God has set for me is for me. It is for me to make it, watch it, simple and plain that this is for you, God, that I serve you with my best. 
And I'm not going to even cheat you. You're a jealous God. I'm not going to serve another God before I serve you. I'm not going to pay attention to another God before I pay attention to you. I'm not going to give another God before I give you. I am going to make you first priority in my life. Somebody out there says, well, I got all this going on. I, well, that's because you let it go on. You're the one that pays more attention to that than you are paying attention to God in you. See, the things on the outside will make you break down. The things on the outside will have you crying and hurt and, 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 feeling, and feeling ashamed. The, but the things on the inside will make you feel great and grand in God because it's spiritual. I hope we ain't just playing with God because because see a lot of us say the right thing but we don't do anything oh yeah we at the right place but we not in the right place is oh yeah we know how to post and to and the tag and all that stuff to get people to look but are we really being effective my god are we really being effective with our own lives i can't say this to anybody no clearer no matter what you're dealing with you cannot fix it or God cannot help you fix it until you fix you. And that has to become number one priority. But I need this. You need to stop your needs and your wants and learn how to abide in him. And then you, you'll know something different. He says, watch this. Because he says uh, uh, for, uh, uh, right there, I am the vine, you are the branches. He abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. That's what we stopped at on Wednesday. Have you already made it up in your mind that I can't do nothing without God? Even though you see some trickles of things coming from the world, that's not, no, I'm talking about doing nothing without God because God will send the right people to do the right things that he wants to do. He'll have the right people get in agreement with you. He'll have the right people praying with you. He'll have the right people working with you. He'll have the right people connected to you because you're connected to him. Then like-minded believers, they, 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 they recognize each other. We're familiar to one another. It seems like we belong around each other. It seems like we have the right answers for each other. You know why? Because we love God and not ourselves. And we know that I cannot help you. By, I can only do it with God. And only with God can we, watch this, survive. And, and, and stay twisted to him. Remember, we're still talking about being entangled, having a lifetime, a life, a life full of entanglement with God. And it's consistent. It's not just for this broadcast. It's just not for church Sunday. It's just not for Bible study on Wednesday or Thursday or whichever, uh, whichever one you go to. It must be consistent. And it starts with me. It does. It starts with me. But guess what? Turn it right back around and it starts with you. You have to be willing to go to the extra mile. You have to be willing to do what's ex what is expected of you. You must do what God has called you to do and stop procrastinating against yourself. You're not hurting me. Uh -uh. I was, that's the one thing I ended on last night on the broadcast is that when God shows up and when it's time to answer, you're going to have to answer for you. You can't say, well, call Pastor E. Uh-uh, he can tell you, he can explain. Uh-uh, no, because I'm going to be dealing with what I have to deal with. And when it's time, you better be ready. That's all I can tell you is that this walk of Christianity is the readiness for when God comes back. Every religion believes God's coming back to do some changing. It's only the Christianity that knows that through Jesus Christ it's going to happen. Everybody else just think he was a man that was here and, and did mighty things. Instead of being God in the flesh. That's the only difference. I was trying to make that so plain last night. No, no, no. If you really get down to it, everybody believed in Jesus Christ. Everybody did. And everything he did, it was no secret of, of him healing the blind, of him raising the dead, of him, of, of, of him, of him healing the sick girl or, or the, the, la the, the lady with the issue of blood. That was all record. There's no question in history that those things happened. The only question is that he is God. In the flesh. And you know what? This is what's so this is what's so powerful. Even though he was God, he obeyed his father to the fullest. He was a pure example of how we should follow instructions to love one another. My God, if we could just get that out there, that it's just about love. 
It's about unity. It's about oneness. It's about togetherness. It's about us coming together without any spot or blemish. He didn't say nothing about religion or, or your street name, or he just said without spot or blemish. But we got so much spot and so much blemish because we're doing things without him. You can do nothing. He says nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, verse six, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they are gathered and, th and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall. Oh, there go that word again. You mean I can get in the promised land? He says, I shall, it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. See, it's time to be the disciples that God has called us to be. We're disciple makers. That's what we do. We make disciples. But how can you make a disciple if you're not a disciple yourself? We have to learn to stay so connected to God that it never even sounds like me. It doesn't, people that, that, that would know you real deeply would be like, he would, uh, no, he wouldn't have said that on his own. That, that wouldn't have been his comeback. That wouldn't have been his response in him. People have to know and be able to recognize the change in you. I'm changed. I'm rearranged. I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. Well, well, but you're still talking the same talk. You're still doing the same thing. You're still treating people the same way. That's not God. And if people, people in general, this world would put down all of the falseness, all of the wickedness and get down to the nitty gritty about God and what he has done. It's about love. It's about respect. It's about being able to communicate with one another and not get all upset and say, well, you know what? Let me listen because I heard a little bit of sense in there that you're saying the same thing I'm saying. But we don't want to listen because it doesn't sound like what we want it to sound like. It doesn't look like we want it to look like. It doesn't come in the form and the fashion or the form that we would accept. But it comes in another form and we say, that's not God. No, that's not you. That's not me. That's us getting in God's way saying, you know what? No, no, I'm doing this. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 no. I'm going to bear my own fruit. I'll deal with it at the end. Whenever you, when you come in, they, they say, they say it's not far away. They say that, that, that you don't know the day, the hour, but when you come, I'll deal with it then. Wrong choice. That's the wrong choice. Don't get caught with your, with, don't get caught out in, in the cold without a jacket on. Don't get caught. In the car without gas. Don't get caught without food in the refrigerator. We have to be prepared that when he comes, we can say, Lord, I know I'm not perfect. But everything I have knowledge, everything I have seen, I'm fixing that stuff. And I know I'm not where I want to be or where, where you would have me to be. But I know I'm not where I used to be. So, Lord, now, now give me my demerits and let me ask for forgiveness and go to work to fix that. So I can now tell everybody introducing that's all I want to do and be in his presence that I can worship him without any restraint worship him without 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 worrying about uh, 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 what people think what people say no but be in his presence remember we talked about that the awe of God the power of God man <laughs> even the unbeliever can tell you there's something in them that's powerful and they don't know what it is, but they don't believe in God. And, but they know there's something higher in them. So many ways we disguise, uh, disguise God. That's why it's up to us to be, watch this, examples of God. That we show people you can do it with him. Don't give up. He definitely hasn't given up on you. Because he left, the, he left us the, 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 the Holy Spirit as our helper, as our guide. He has not given up on you. You didn't do something so bad, so terrible that God stopped loving you. He, it, it, that's not, don't let somebody tell you that. Don't let somebody tell you that, that, that it's easy being a Christian because it's not. Don't let somebody tell you that, oh, that's the, that's the trendy way. That was the question last night. Was Christianity too trendy? Yeah, for unchristians it is because they think they can put on a cross and people, oh, they're Christian, leave them alone. Uh-uh. 
You better let, you better know we're going to be marked. They coming after us. And those that are out there playing, you going to know it. You don't have to worry about that. Don't look, look, let the dead bury the, the dead. But you have to worry about you. <laughs> and you have to know that to glorify God is to glorify the next person next to you. And let them know that they're important. Let them know that they're valued. Let them know that they're loved. And let them know that they're important. That God has a plan for them. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. God didn't give up on you. Don't give up on God. But get in there and go to work. And do the work. And be consistent with the work. And obey the work. And, the, and then the, watch this. Then the results of the work will come. Don't tell me when you go to work and clock in and clock out at the end of your pay period, you don't get blessed. Cause you what? Went to work. You did the work to get the pay. You kicked the clock. You went and did your job. You clocked out. You kept account and you now doing what it takes to get paid. Come on in here. Yes, 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 Pastor Valores, after the road of Damascus. We ain't talking about before the road, or we're not talking about on the road. We're talking about after the road. When you have to really get the scales off your eyes, when you really have to recognize the light and know that the light changes things, it changes things immediately. I use this, uh, use this analogy all the time. Get a plant, two plants, two plants. Get the same soil, the same nutrients. Get the same everything in those in those in those in those planters. Put a seed in there that you know grows. You put one out in the outside on the outside and put one under the table in your backyard and walk away. Just leave it there. Uh, don't water it no more. Don't do nothing. Just you watered it. You got the soil already. You got the you got the seed in there. Put one on top of the table and one under the table. Walk away. That's that's on Monday. Come back Saturday morning and go look at them pots and you'll see the one that's out in the light has changed because you see a little sprout. It ain't got all grown and big, but it has changed from the from the from the from the uh, uh, the position that you put it in. And with the things you put in it, it had changed its original form because of the what light. Now, go under the table and get that pot and bring it out in the light and look at it. It's going to look exactly the same. The, the, now, the ground may have dried because the water has withered away, but can, you'll see nothing different than the same flat plane that you put there. Now, you want to test the, test the system. Put some water on both of them again and change positions. Put the one that changed under the table and put the one that didn't change on top of the table. Walk away. Come back on set the next Saturday morning and I guarantee you'll see that the one that is in the light has changed. Jesus is the light and the light changes things. All you got to do is spend time in the light. My God. That's all we got to do. And learn to love one another without reward. Le learn to love one another without condemnation. It is so easy to judge other people because now you think you're not being judged. Judge unless you be judged. Talk unless you be talked about. Scorn unless you want to be scorned. See, those are the things that the enemy will win now. He's, in, he's, in, he's victorious now because he didn't make you do what he wanted you to do. You did it on your own. The devil cannot make you do anything. He does not have the power to, 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 to have you do anything unwillfully. He can only present you with, a, with an option. And if you take that option and you made the wrong decision and now the wrong thing is going to happen. Remember I said, you're going to find, there, there's a tempter out there. But are you going to let it turn into temptation? Because once you let it turn into temptation, now you have let it turn into trouble. Now you're in a bunch of big trouble because you look, didn't let the, look at the tempt in the, the tempted in the eye and say, not up in here. Uh uh, no, you can go around the corner with that one because no, that ain't going to work over here no more, boo boo. That ain't how we roll no more. We got a trench built. We got fortification built. No, we don't go back there no more. What you mean? Do what? How, how dare you insult me and even expect me to go left field again? I will never return from which I came. See, that's being about our father's business. And that's about being, that's what Christianity is. That people can say, wow, I respect how you handled that. 
And then he wasn't, he wasn't dumb. He didn't stick there and, and, and get retaliated against. He got out the way. He said, peace be with you and keep it moving. Stick, stick around there too much and the evil will take over. You better say what you got to say. Get on up out of there and move and go do what God has called you to do. Be an example to this world and make disciples that we can glorify God. Waking up in our mind, getting up in our thinking and moving in our purpose. It's this what it's about. What's my purpose? This John 15 is wake up. That's your wake up mode. Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, and let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no re reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. That's getting up in your thinking. Let the mind of Christ in you. And, and, and watch this, humble yourself. Someone asked me last night, well, how do you deal with other religions? I just humble myself. I'm not going to fight against them. I'm not going to go against them. No, I'm not. I'm going to stand on the promises of God and love my neighbor, love my enemy, love those that hate me, love those that curse me, love, 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 love. Because now I got to get up and move. Now I got to wake up in my mind, get up in my thinking and move in my purpose. Matthew 25. Somebody. Hey. Yes, Jesus. Matthew 25. Come on, somebody. You know what it says. I'm sorry, I'm not, not Matthew 25, Matthew 27. He says, go ye therefore and make ye disciples in what? All the land. It's the great commission, Matthew 28, in 27 and 28. But in 28, it says, then the 11 disciples went, went away in the Galilee to, to the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me. On, in heaven and on earth, go ye therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded to you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this wind age that you're doing your purpose, making disciples. What's disciples of love? That's all. Not a disciple of how you preach and how you teach and, and the things you the things that you, you thought that were important to you. Remember, we got to learn, we have to first of all learn to give God the best thanks that we can. And the best thanks we can is by submitting to him. And the best submission we can do is by examining ourselves. And then you got to get your identity, as I said, said the other day. And then you got to say, Lord, fill me. Fill me with your spirit that I can do your will. And I don't have to wait to do your will. I can do your will right now in the name of Jesus. And I don't have to wait around for the results because I know I'm already a branch. Come on. I'm not a, no, I'm not a twig. Don't even look at me like I'm a twig no more. I'm a branch. I'm a full branch. I'm a productive branch. And it's not just one fruit. It's much fruit. That's a productive branch. Then we can still love each other and share that same love that God can, you can do it. It's possible. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can do it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your path in love. So Heavenly Father God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for waking up in our mind. We thank you for getting up in our, getting, waking up, waking up in our minds, getting up in our purpose and moving in, in <laughs> getting up in our thinking and moving in our purpose. That Lord, you be magnified and that you be glorified. Lord, we right now open up the portion room. And Lord, we give freely. I give freely right now to the portion room. Healing, deliverance, love, peace, joy. I sow into the portion room right now that you can freely distribute right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask my, my covenant partners to do the same and sow into the, into the portion room this morning and to give God your best. I want to link in with you guys this morning. I want to link in with you this morning and we want to link in in all the places that you are for those million minds, those million minds that you're de dealing with up in your city and your state, the assignment that you've been put on. I want those that are on assignment for, for Minister Kim. I'm not, that's not over. We got to stay on that thing. This is going to be about a year assignment. I want you to know that it's about a year assignment that I need you to be in them gaps that we have put ourselves in. The assignments that you have taken up. Five people called in out of a hundred that were on that broadcast that day. Five. Guess what? Those are the five that God wanted to go. 
But if you still feel like you, you know, you meant to send me a message and you didn't get it to me, go ahead and send it now that you can get in the position that God has called you. Oh, yes. Encouragement, strength, victory. Thank you, Minister Charlene. Uh, thank you, Minister Monique. Thank you, everybody that's sewing into the portion room right now, that as we connect on the minds, pull them on in. Come on, pull them in. Pull them in. One is coming. We say a million. Uh, just if one made it today, then we're, we're, we did a good job. One mind that came back and says, man, I don't know where, where I've been, but I'm back. Where's my family? Where, where's my house? Where's my stuff? And God will provide because we'll be there to support. Amen. Come on, pull them in. Pull them in. Link in. Link in. Say not by power and not by might, but by the spirit of God. Link them in. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you're blessing them, Lord. Now we pray for our covenant partners. We want to pray for every covenant partner of this ministry. That is sowing and that is that is that is that is working and that is uh, uh, giving here freely on this network, on this broadcast, in this ministry. We want you to fill their cup, let it overflow, that they can become overflowers and they become sowers in the other people's lives, that they become overflowers and then we become overflowers. And before you know it, we're all overflowing. So we thank you this morning for each and every man, woman, child, person that is connected with this ministry. That you bless them exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or ask. New jobs, new positions, new businesses, new customers, ooh, new materials, new machinery. Things that God can make can, that will come to you will make you a better branch. So we're asking right now to be fortified as a branch. To become twisted with the vine. That now we can be connected to the vine dresser. Oh my God. And his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wake up in your mind. Get up in your thinking and move in your purpose. Family, tomorrow is the hallelujah um, harvest day celebration here at East Tees for you. 1112 East Artesia Boulevard tomorrow from 1 p.m. We'll be at, we'll be here at noon, but we're going to kick it off at 1 and take it over to, in, until about 3 or 4 o'clock. We're going to have some, uh, some burgers, some hot dogs. We're gonna have uh, some games. We're gonna have some 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 snacks, and we're asking for healthy snacks. We got nachos. We got popcorn. We we just have a good time, and and we're just looking for the community to come out. People walking down the street, driving down the street. We're gonna be hollering and, and telling them to come on over and send their friends, and and we're gonna just try to fellowship with one another here at Ease Tees for you tomorrow at one p.m. Yes, it is the Hallelujah Harvest Celebration. Here at Provoke to Purpose Ministries, eleven twelve East Artesia Boulevard. We'll be on the court. We'll be on the sidewalk. You can't miss it. We're gonna be making noise. You you'll be able to hear it. You will know what's going on. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Minister Terry. What's up? What's up, uh, Elder Carlos? How how are you, man of God? God bless you, man. Yes, God is good. God is good, and His mercies endure forever. We want you guys to come out, be a part of it. If you're out of state. And you still want to help. We still need donations. We still need other stuff. We want to make it a grand day for the children out here. Uh, and it, whatever it is God puts on your heart, get in touch with us. Get in touch with Minister Carolyn, myself, Pastor Brenda, any of the covenant partners that are in this um, that you know on Facebook. Get in touch with us. Let's get together. Let's make something happen. Come out tomorrow. Sing a song. We're going to mic out there. You can stop by in five minutes, sing a song for the kids, for the neighborhood, and go about your business. Come out here and bless them tomorrow from 1 p.m. until 3, 4 o'clock and watch God move. We're going to have a great time. I'm going to be excited for that. I want to see you guys out here for that uh, uh, also. Tonight at 6 p.m. On the, on the Now Now Network radio for you here at the Blog Talk Radio, uh, tonight is, is Let's Talk About It with myself and Pastor Valores. We're going to be talking about politics. We're going to be talking about voting. We're going to be talking about some stuff. That, that, that really most Christians don't want to talk about, we're going to talk about it. That's what Let's Talk About It is all about. We're going to keep it real. We're going to keep it relevant. And we're going to keep it still based on the word of God. But you gotta you got to address these things. And we have to be in order. We have to be connected. And we have to be in agreement. How, how can we agree if we don't talk? Come on out tonight, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And I know the game is going on tonight. I'll be on that broadcast talking about the things that are prevalent, prevalent to us as believers that we can do a better, 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 better work for God than we are 
Not only in, in the word, but in the world. See, you, you got to be fully sold out to him. He has to be the complete source of your life. He has to be your everything. He can't just be your part-time, I need you today, and then gone tomorrow. No, he has to be your source of everything. There's not nothing I don't do before praying to God. There's nothing I don't do before going before the Lord. There's not a decision made that I am not in, in my quiet place. Saying, Lord, no, -uh, I need to know. Was it sent by you? Is this me? And he said, well, son, don't you already know the system? I'm going to let you know ahead of time that it's coming. So you don't look all crazy when it gets here. I said, thank you, Father. And I'll be like, no, that's not for me today. Man, this is a great opportunity. Man, you can do great in this. No, I can't. You can do great in that. But what God has for me is for me. And when God wants you to, I'm telling you this, this is when you're connected to the vine, you don't have to worry about if that opportunity is for you because you'll be waiting on it to show up. There are things I'm waiting on to hit that door. There are phone calls I'm still waiting to hear ring on that telephone over there. There are people I'm still waiting to show up right now because I know they're couriers of the things that God has for me. They didn't show up today. Are you discouraged? No, I'm still waiting. But I know that I know that I know they're coming because I have faith and I believe in God that if I serve him with my best and I know he's a source of my everything, I won't have to look for anything. I have to call you and ask you for nothing. It'll already be there. It was a miracle this morning. Somebody got a knock on the door and say, hey, what's going on? I got something for you. What's this? This is, I wasn't expecting that. That's how God will show up for you when you're expecting it. We all have something that we are in need of. I'm going to put a challenge out there to you this weekend. There's all of us have an area that we're dealing with in our lives that we need to do better about. I dare you to believe, to ask God to forgive you for your lack of faith. That's number one. Then ask God to redeem you, to strengthen you in your faith. Then believe that it's already done. Oh my God, Somebody, something going to show up in the next five minutes for one person out there because you're just on the verge. And you, just, you just need that last little push. But for the rest of us that are going to see this manifest throughout the weekend, I dare you to walk in it, talk in it, believe in it. Every time something negative comes up, you say, eh, not up in here. I'm a believer. I'm a branch. Remember, you can't be a twig. <laughs> See, that twig is the one that gets weathered away, that gets, that, gets, that gets gathered up. That's the one that gets burnt and taken away. No, but a branch is connected to the vine and you produce much fruit. But you got to know that the fruit is coming. I guarantee you, whatever that thing is that you have been lacking in faith on, if you connect with God in faith and believe in faith and walk in faith and talk in faith, watch him show up. And, I'm, and watch this. Thank you. Thank you, security. Yeah, because he shows up. He shows out. He does it out because he's already done it. That's what's so miraculous about the God we serve is that he's finished it. The work has been finished. But are you really ready to become the finished work? Simple question. And you can't be a twig. You got to be a branch. I'm preaching that one. Yes, 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 yes. That's that's my next little catch phrase. You can't out. You look, stop being a twig and grow up and be a branch. Because it's time to become productive. It's time to become, what's this? What? He didn't say some fruit. He says much fruit. He started out more fruit. Then he said much fruit when you abide in him and his words abide in you. Remember, anything you ask, you shall have the desires because they're no longer your desires. That's the twig. The twig is dead. You got the desires of the branch that's connected to the vine that the vine dresser ooh, is vine. It's nourishing. See, that's what it's all about. Waking up in your mind, getting up in your thinking and moving in your purpose. That's what it's all about is that we change this thing up here. I'm ready. Yes, I am. I'm ready. I'm ready right now. I am ready for what God has for me. That's the question that's being put out there this morning. Are you ready for what God has for you? I'm ready. Come on, bring it right now. I'm not going to turn away from it. I'm not scared of it. I can handle it. I won't turn away from you. I'll get closer to you. I'll get stronger in you. But come on, right now, I'm ready for it. And you should be ready too. Yes, you, yes, you should. No, it didn't show up. My, no, nobody's out at my door knocking right now. <laughs> Did I get discouraged? No, I'm ready. That means you better get put in the right position. That's right. Twigs aren't strong enough. You got to be a branch. <laughs> I 
a branch that has been pruned. Remember, he says, any branch that is in me that, produ that, that produces fruit, he prunes in a way that you can produce much fruit. My God, come on, lift your hands and say, I'm ready. Just say, oh yeah, I'm ready, 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 I'm ready for what you have for me. Stop looking for a check. Stop looking for a car and a house. Say, I'm ready for you because I need your spirit. Good morning, Joe. How you doing, champ? What's up, my brother? I'm ready for more of you. I can handle more of you. Come on, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. I love you, Lord, and I live my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to follow. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to do. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for what you have for me. Come on. I need, I know you're going to send the best too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Somebody start looking and find a good thing. <laughs> you better start looking and finding that God is with you and God is ready to, to elevate you and God is ready to, to, ooh, to deliver. He's a delivering God. He's a providing God. He's a, he's a God of excellence. But don't expect excellence if you're not in excellence. You can't, you can't do it. It doesn't match up. You, negative doesn't go with positive. Positive doesn't go with negative. <laughs> Look, this, this, is, this is what Pastor Valor says. She said, vines don't produce on the ground. They must be lifted up. You better be ready for the lifting. Let me tell you, I told y'all, I, I asked you guys to do that experiment. Go somewhere where you see a vine. Just stop on the road. Go look at it. It ain't going down. It's going up. It's finding ways to entangle up. My neighbor, he put a tree in his yard. And all of a sudden, this vine start growing on it. And it just start going up and up and up. And I said, oh, that's the entanglement with God. Because remember, Colossians says, if you have, been, if, if, if you have, if, if you have risen with Christ, seek those things which are in heaven, not those things that are on earth. You better look up. Stop looking down. Come on, turn the lights on, Minister Charlene. Yes, you have to know that God is able. Yeah, I'm ready because I know he's able. Don't say you're ready and you still questioning. Is that for me? Then put your hands down. <laughs> hey, Elise, how you doing, my sister? Look, put your hands down. Am I too real? I mean, if you if you don't have the faith and you're still sitting there like, ah, I'm just saying something. Put your hands down. Stop playing. Raise your hands when you are ready to receive. And you still, you're sick and tired of playing. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. And let God move on, on your behalf. He's ready. He's willing. And I'll tell you this, this is the most important thing. He's able. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above you all you can think or ask. I just, are you ready? I'm ready. I am so ready. I am so ready for it all. The completeness, the complete, I am so ready for the completeness of God in my life. You say, well, you, 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 you sound like, a, man, I, to be complete, that means everything's in order. Aren't you ready for the completeness of God? My God, I am, I am, I am, I am so ready. Family, God bless you guys this morning. I, I just, I, I appreciate our time here. And, and uh, I know this is an interactive show and I, I love you guys' comments. And, and, and things like that. Oh, so we got another ready to receive. Come on, just keep them hands up. But you better be ready to be lifted up. You better be ready to go to another level. You better be ready for that next assignment. You better be ready for that message. You better be ready for that brother that's going to need you to love him. You better be ready because it's coming. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. Come. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. I needed this this morning, too. Amen. I needed this because guess what? It's all about loving one another, showing each other that, you know what? If you think God is doing something good in my life, because that's all I'm going to talk about is God. He'll do the same for you when you just love. You don't have to get a degree. You don't have to get a, 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 a plaque on the wall. You don't have to get an ordination 
to be a minister of God because being a minister of God means you are ready to love. Love one another as you love yourself. Treat somebody better than you treat yourself. Let somebody know that God's going to do better in their life than he's going to do in, in your life. What's up, Hub City Dre? What's up, my brother? Man, I had such a great time last night. Man, I bless you, man. God is going to do, God is already doing miraculous things in your life, and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it. But I'm ready. I'm ready for what God has for me. And guess what? I still stand here ready. Ready to do what God has told me to do. Love you better than I love me. And you know you love you. Come on, keep it real this morning. You know you, you know you got a big love crush on yourself. So if you love me better than you love yourself, I would. I wouldn't have no lack in love. If I love you as I love myself, because I love me some me. Let's, let's keep it real. Let, let, you know, we always want to foster like, oh, no, I'm, not, I'm not out of love with me. You better know. You know you love yourself. Because, because see, that's when I fell in love with myself, when I stopped doing the things in the world and start loving myself and the things in God. And then God started to show up. And then God started to move. Then God, what, watch this, became glorified through me. It wasn't by power. It wasn't by might. It was by the submission to say, you know what? I want to be an agent of love and I want you to use me in any way you can. And even though people, look, don't, you might as well get over it. People going to talk, talk about you. People are going to be in disagreement with you. People are going to hate on you. They are. I don't care how much you do right. People are always going to be out there. But are you going to let that affect you? I'm not. I'm a branch. I'm a branch ready to be full of fruit. Every time you call me, I need an orange. Come on, get it, man. Get an apple. Girl. Yeah, man. Let's, let's have a fruit party. <laughs> Woo, God is good. Man, I love you guys. I, I, I love you. I honor you. I appreciate it. But the most important thing I want you to know is I thank God for you. You were beautifully made by God. You, you are God's greatest miracle. I can, I'll tell you that every time I talk to you. There's nothing wrong with you. No, it isn't. Even in, even in the mess, even in the mess, even in the stuff, there's nothing wrong with you other than the fact that you're paying more attention to the mess than you are the glory. That's the only difference is that we get so bogged up in the stuff that we can't fix no way. Instead of getting into the place that we can fix by being conscious in God and by believing in him and trusting in him. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledging him in all your ways and he shall direct your path. When? Right now. Amen. Wake up in your mind. Get up in your thinking and move in your purpose in Jesus' name.